sexual harassment. Could this be the downfall of the media legend? Breaking overnight, a new harassment claim against a veteran member of Congress. The alleged hush money paid out. Meanwhile, the White House faces new criticism in the Roy Moore scandal. I'm giving you the answer to the position of the White House. Border Patrol mystery. New clues overnight about the death of a border agent in Texas. The president calling it an attack. What we're learning about the agent's injuries and his partner, who can't remember what happened. Rescue in the Gulf. A family swims for their lives after their boat catches fire. A famous TV judge busted for speeding, caught driving 119 miles an hour. What happened next? And fashion fail, the misstep at the Victoria's Secret fashion show. Plus the $2 million fantasy bra revealed. From ABC News in New York, this is America This Morning. A good Tuesday morning to you all. We begin with veteran TV host Charlie Rose facing sexual harassment allegations from at least eight women this morning. Yeah, and CBS quickly suspending Rose, and PBS has stopped production of his show, his interview show, after his accusers opened up to the Washington Post, sharing at times some disturbing details of groping, nudity, and even lewd phone calls. And new this morning, we're hearing from his former interns. ABC Stephanie Ramos is joining us now. Good morning, Stephanie. Hey, Kenneth and Diane, good morning. We're now hearing daily sexual allegations against well-known men. The Washington Post says the women accusing longtime broadcaster Charlie Rose of sexual misconduct did not know one another and worked for Charlie Rose at different times. Another familiar face is accused of sexual misconduct. 75-year-old longtime broadcaster and CBS This Morning co-anchor Charlie Rose is now accused of sexual harassment and assault. Eight women have come forward in the Washington Post with major allegations against the host of the highly regarded Charlie Rose show. Charlie Rose. Three women shared their experiences with Business Insider. Five of the women told the Washington Post that Rose groped them. Two say he walked naked in front of them, and one accused Rose of firing her after he allegedly touched her inappropriately and made sexually charged remarks to her. In a statement, Rose says, it is essential that these women know I hear them and that I deeply apologize for my inappropriate behavior. I am greatly embarrassed. He went on to say, I always felt that I was pursuing shared feelings, even though I now realize I was mistaken. Larry King, a fellow iconic journalist, called the sexual misconduct allegations against his friend sad. I feel sorry about it. I know Charlie a long time. It is what it is. It's a sad case. Many of the accusers say they did speak up during that time, telling Yvette Vega, Rose's longtime executive producer, about what happened to them. One woman described Vega's response as a shrug and saying, that's just Charlie being Charlie. The three women who came forward overnight to Business Insider were interns for Rose at the time. And in Rose's statement, he also said, though he accepts responsibility, he does not believe all of the allegations are accurate. Kenneth Diane. All right, Stephanie Ramos for us live from Washington. Thanks, Stephanie. And also there in Washington on Capitol Hill, there's a new sexual harassment claim being reported. The website BuzzFeed says Michigan Congressman John Conyers, the longest serving member of the House of Representatives, settled a complaint two years ago from a woman claiming she was fired for rejecting his sexual advances. ABC News has not confirmed this. Uh, BuzzFeed says she was paid $27,000 to settle that case. Senator Al Franken says he is not planning to resign after a second accuser has come forward claiming sexual harassment. Lindsay Men says Franken grabbed her backside while posing for this photo in 2010. Franken says he does not remember taking the picture, but feels badly that she felt disrespected. In the meantime, the Alabama Senate candidate Rory Moore is firing back at one of his accusers. His campaign is questioning claims by Beverly Nelson that Moore sexually assaulted her when she was a 16-year-old waitress. They're quoting two restaurants employees who say they don't remember seeing Nelson or Moore eating together. In the meantime, President Trump is still refusing to weigh in on this particular controversy. Thank you. Your thoughts on Roy Moore, Mr. President? Do you believe his accusers? Do you believe Roy Moore's accusers, Mr. President? 
ABC's Cecilia Vega there pressing the president at the cabinet meeting, and she continued to do so at the White House after Trump advisor Kellyanne Conway spoke on Fox News on Monday and offered what sounded like an endorsement of more, saying Republicans need his vote to pass tax reform. Is that the position of this White House, that voters are better off voting for someone accused of assaulting teenage girls than a Democrat? The position of the White House hasn't changed. We feel like the people of Alabama should make the determination on who their next senator should but be. But she made a clear suggestion over who they should vote and for. And I'm telling, I'm giving you the answer to the position of the White House. And another woman who says that she had sexual encounters with Moore when she was just 14 years old says it took years to regain her confidence. She denies that her allegations are politically motivated. The Trump administration is announcing new sanctions against North Korea today aimed at pressuring Kim Jong-un to stop his nuclear program. President Trump promised the sanctions while placing North Korea back on the official list of states that sponsor terrorism. North Korea was removed from that list in 2008 by President Bush as part of an effort Effort to restart peace talks. Meanwhile, airstrikes have been carried out against Taliban drug labs in Afghanistan under a policy announced by President Trump in August. U.S. and Afghan forces took part in that operation. The Taliban generates an estimated $200 million each year from poppy cultivation and opium production. Well, back in this country, the Border Patrol Union says the agent who died in Texas this weekend was ambushed. A union spokesman reportedly said the agent was investigating signs of a group in a location known for drug activity. Another source tells the Associated Press the agent and his partner may have fallen into a culvert. Both suffered traumatic head injuries. The agent who survived reportedly does not remember what happened. The governor of Texas now offering a $20,000 reward for information on this case. And also in Texas, in the western part of the state, a pilot has been killed after an Air Force training jet crashed. Another pilot injured. The two-seat jet, similar to this one, usually carries an instructor and a student. The jet was based at Lachlan Air Force. Argentina's Navy says sounds heard in the South Atlantic were natural and did not come from its missing submarine. The sub was last heard from five days ago when the crew reported a battery failure. They were then trying to return to base when the sub disappeared. Forty-four sailors are on board that missing sub. A U.S. Navy jet is helping with the search, which is being hampered by bad weather and rough seas. And time now for a look at your weather this Tuesday morning. Although the storm is moving into the northwest, bringing heavy rain and possible flooding, up to half a foot of rain could fall, but very little snow is expected even in the mountains because apparently it's too warm out there. Now, warmer temperatures today will help the people in central New York dig out from the first significant snowfall of the season. Some areas got nine inches of snow. The Syracuse suburbs saw half a foot of snow, but the high there today will be around 52 degrees. So plenty of time and plenty of weather for it to melt. Coming up, why one of the most important holiday decorations will be costing you a lot more this year. Uh, but first, a company is ordered to pay millions of dollars after family on vacation is poisoned with pesticides. And a possible breakthrough in diagnosing concussions. We're back with video of a massive fire north of Detroit. A high-pressure gas main burst into flames, burning for hours. The gas company shut down the line to let the fire burn itself out. No reports of any injuries or damage to homes, but those flames could be seen for more than 30 miles. Newly released surveillance video shows a moment after a fire broke out inside a senior living facility near Philadelphia last week. Many volunteer firefighters raced in without even putting on all their equipment. Officials now say four residents are unaccounted for. They're between ages 85 and 93. Puerto Rico is struggling with more power problems. The company that's under contract to restore power has stopped working, claiming it's owed $83 million. Right now, less than half of the island's electrical grid is generating power. Meanwhile, after a report claimed the death toll from the hurricane, from Hurricane Maria, that is, could top 500, a government official is now asking funeral directors to come forward with any information 
on storm-related deaths. Terminex has paid, has been ordered to pay a $10 million criminal fine for the poisoning of a Delaware family on vacation in the Virgin Islands. The U.S. government says the company sprayed an illegal pesticide at a resort two years ago. Terminex has already reportedly paid the family of Teresa Devine and Steve Esmond a $90 million settlement. Officials say that Esmond and their two sons suffered permanent paralysis. The Trump administration is going to court to block the merger of AT&T and Time Warner, the parent company of CNN. The lawsuit filed by the Justice Department claims the combined companies would reduce competition and increase prices. AT&T calls the suit radical and is vowing to fight it in court. All right, so before you buy your Christmas tree this year, you may want to stuff some extra green in your wallet. Christmas tree prices are up nearly 10% this year. You can blame last decade's recession. Um, growers say 10 years ago, they planted fewer trees because of sluggish sales, and that's causing this year's shortage. Sure. Hmm. Um, but price was no object for a time-honored White House tradition. First Lady Melania Trump with her son there welcoming the arrival of the White House Christmas tree from Wisconsin, all 19 feet of it. Mine arrived too, straight out of storage. Just oh, plug just, it right in the wall, it's no, already lit. You just boom, it real. just pops right out. It's great. No. No shortage there. All right, when we come back, the new discovery about life on Mars. And also ahead, caught on camera, the rescue at sea after a family's boat catches fire. And why a mother is now going to jail after her son died. That is a theme from Touched by an Angel. And this morning, we are remembering actress Della Reese there. Long before her hit show, she toured as a gospel singer, appeared with Ed Sullivan 18 times, oh, wow. and then became the first black woman to host her own variety series and fill in for Johnny Carson. Wow. Quite a career. Her yeah. co-star, Roma Downey, said, Heaven has a brand new angel. Della Reese was 86. Well, she will be remembered there. Uh, we turn now to the new lawsuits filed in connection with the Las Vegas shooting rampage. Five suits filed on behalf of hundreds of victims claim the hotel and concert promoter failed to secure the concert on the Strip last month and failed to take precautions to prevent the shooting. They had no plan. They violated their own policies. They violated industry standard policies and they ignored what their own experts told them to do. So the lawsuits were filed in Los Angeles, where attorneys say a casino promoter like MGM will have less influence than it would in Nevada. Many of the victims also came from California. A young mother has been sentenced to three years in prison after her son died when she failed to take him to the doctor for strep throat. Tamara Lovett said she thought her seven-year-old had a cold and gave him holistic remedies. The Canadian judge called it a senseless death, saying the boy could have been easily treated with antibiotics. The mom says she hopes others will learn from her ignorance. Well, doctors may soon have a powerful new tool to help diagnose concussions. Researchers at Penn State say a test that measures genetic material in saliva was nearly 90% accurate in predicting how long symptoms would last. That's compared to the current methods that are only about 70% accurate. Most concussions are among children and teenagers often playing sports. New research indicates the theory of water on Mars may be drying up. Scientists with the U.S. Geological Survey studied some lines on Martian slopes. They say the lines are likely to be steep flows of sand, not water, as NASA claimed two years ago. Researchers say if there is water on Mars, it's likely a small amount and probably would not be able to support life. We'll have to come up with new moving things. Yeah. A dramatic scene from the Gulf of Mexico now. A family of three in the water clinging to some buoys after jumping from their burning boat there. Luckily, a ferry on its way to Key West was passing by, and the crew helped pull the family to safety. Witnesses say it looked like the family's boat engine was on fire. You can see the scenes there, and they were not hurt. And Florida is known for its gators, but take a look at a six-foot crocodile that swam onto the beach in Hollywood. It crawled along the shore for miles before eventually being captured by wildlife officers there. It will now be returned to its habitat. Great, now we have to worry about gators in addition to, exactly. or crocs rather, in addition to sharks, just mm -hmm. what we need. All right, time now for sports, starting off with Monday Night Football. It all came down to the final play, actually. Here's a look at the highlights from ESPN. 
Up next in the Pulse, a famous judge ticketed for going 190 miles an hour. Also ahead, a fashion model falls on the runway, but it's how she handled it all that's impressing everyone. Plus, the implosion that only took seconds to complete and the perfect photobomb that ruined one man's shot. Time to check the polls, and a famous TV judge is in a bit of trouble with the law. Yeah, Fox News host Janine Pirro, who used to host a TV court show, was caught speeding in upstate New York. Police say she was driving 119 miles an hour. Uh, Pirro says that she was racing to see her sick mother and will, quote, pay the consequences. Uh, those consequences could be more than $600 in fines and the loss of her license. Uh, next, the Victoria's Secret's annual fashion show held this year in Shanghai. Uh, Harry Styles came face to face with three of his exes when he performed at the show. <laughs> A little bit awkward. Uh, Katy Perry was also supposed to perform. Uh, the Chinese government denied her visa, though, because of an outfit that she wore in Taiwan back in 2015. Wow, they hold grudges, don't they? Um, but the show must go on, and Brazilian model here, Laís Ribeiro donned a golden bra worth $2 million. Uh, and a Chinese model kept it together even after taking a tumble on the runway. Watch as she falls, then just adjusts her outfit, gathers herself, gets right back on the runway. The whole thing lasted just seconds. People are now applauding her response. Yeah, many and another said, moment. we'll see you next fall. <laughs> <laughs> and another moment supposed to be caught on camera, but it wasn't. So it happened in Hotlanta. The city was counting down to the minutes to the demolishing of the Georgia Dome, which has hosted Super Bowls, as you know, Final Fours and Olympic Games. Camera crews gathered on the ground to get that perfect shot, and then <gasps> in rolls the bus. Oh, on live and TV, three, no less. Two, and there's the bus. Oh. Let's take a look at our top stories. TV host Charlie Rose has been suspended amid allegations of sexual misconduct from at least eight women, mostly former employees of his. And there's word that Congressman John Conyers had settled a harassment claim. According to BuzzFeed, he was accused of firing a woman for rejecting his sexual advances. One worker is dead and dozens injured after a fire and two explosions at a cosmetics factory north of New York City. Some of the injured were firefighters caught in a second explosion. The nation's airlines are preparing for a 6% increase in travelers this Thanksgiving week compared to last year. Southwest Airlines Social Media Center says it's contacted about 3,000 times a day by customers. Looking at today's weather, expect some light rain in the east, some snow around the Great Lakes. The northwest will see heavy rain with some flooding possible today. It will be 84 and beautiful in L.A., and that, of course, is the scene for the finale. Two months of dancing all comes down to one last night for Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, the field is down to three couples, and they will dance tonight for the coveted Mirror Ball Trophy. George Pinocchio tells us which couple came up one dance short. Drew and Emma. Drew Scott and Emma Slater dance their way all the way to the finals, but they won't dance for the Mirror Ball. After their elimination Monday night, they became the season's fourth place finishers with no regrets. Thank you to all of you guys. You. It, it warms my heart to see how much you guys love what we were doing. We put so much effort into it. The physical side of this, the mental side of what we've done out here, it's really helped me grow. It's yeah. all thanks to Emma. I've been so blessed to have a partner that just wants to go the extra mile with me, who is up every hour committed <laughs> to Dancing with the Stars, and we had the blast doing it. Drew would often surprise Emma with a little pre-rehearsal lunch. I'm into self-torture here because she loves Greek food, so I would give her Greek food. She loves hummus, Caesar and tzatziki and she would eat that right before breathing in my face for the whole dance for a five-hour rehearsal. I did it on purpose because I wanted him to like Keep me get away, away yeah. from me. Lean back, from, like, like, lean back. Now it's down to three couples. Jordan Fisher and Lindsay Arnold, Lindsay Sterling and Mark Ballas, Frankie Muniz and Whitney Carson. Guest judge Julianne Huff says any couple could take it. Everybody brought something completely unique and different and they all slayed. It was so good. So I don't know. We'll find out who takes home the Mirror Bowl during Dancing with the Stars' big finale tonight at 9, 8 central, here on ABC. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Any bets? I'm going with Jordan. Ooh. Um, well, you he's said already, he's a ringer. He's a ringer. He used to be in Hamilton. He knows to sing and dance. And I'm all going that. with Lindsay. She played the violin and she danced last night. I'm excited to see what she's going to do tonight. All right. I will win. That's what's making news in America this morning. Enjoy your Tuesday. 
Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is News Watch 16 This Morning.